There's uh, another song sometimes uh, we sing, it's uh, where Jesus is, is heaven there. Where Jesus is, is heaven there. And a lot of times with, if devotion escapes us, what it really means. Ian Bounds had this to say about devotion. The root of devotion, to devote to a sacred use. To devote to a sacred use. And I thought about that and I said, that's good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Create atmosphere. Get into the type of mode, posture, attitude to where maximum good can come out of the effort of prayer, of worship study of the word, of witnessing, anything of a spiritual, religious nature to devote yourself to that sacred cause. And uh, it uh, seems to bring out more of the meaning and the power of the, uh, the truth, the occasion, the effort. I have been to a few funerals that... Uh, if, if you didn't know it was a funeral and all the wise and the wherefores of those, the spirit of it all was uh, of a little bit different nature than funerals often are. Where there really was just a, a deep, subtle peace, a deep, subtle peace, and a far reaching joy that went beyond the occasion. Where there was real gratitude to God trust in his outcome, and uh, tell you, it made a, a funeral a different situation. But devotion will change a lot of situations. Devotion can help you get the most out of a religious situation. And that's true. So Lord, help us to understand uh, what we're talking about here. A frame of mind, a spirit of reverence. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin here. Thank you, Lord, for this time, for this occasion, for our thoughts uh, going to this matter of devotion and love. And at this uh, Valentine's Day, Lord, we think about these things in regard to our families and friends and, and above all, to the love of God. So help us now as we consider these things before us and this group that is here today. Bind our hearts together in the spirit of God, in the spirit of love, in the spirit of light and truth. Glory to the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation in chapter 4. And um, this vision here of the heavenlies. And I just took out this one verse here. Verse uh, 8. And uh, John the Revelator was talking about these uh, beings and heavenly setting and what was going on as the Lord showed it to him. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, if you think about that a little bit, 
in the eternal realm, there's these beings, and they don't rest. They just are in awe of the presence that they are in. And um, for a long time, you know, I kind of thought, well, that, that's kind of their job, isn't it? I'm a little more simpler about a lot of things, so I, I've read that scripture a lot of times too, through the years, and uh, I just kind of figured angels had jobs to do, and they did those jobs unquestioningly, with their whole being, they didn't balk at anything, they just went and did them. And so, when uh, the um, author I was reading brought this out, that these beings are doing what they're doing because of the inspiration they have received being in the presence of God. Now that threw it in a different light in my thinking as I thought about this. So what? They rest not. Day or night, that day or night business was for our understanding. Not that it's ever nighttime in heaven. But that we measure time, that we start to understand uh, what was going on here. They don't rest, regardless of what's going on. The awe, the power, the presence, the glory, and the light of God Himself is so inspirational, so mighty, that these beings don't rest. They just cry and praise on and on and on so bound and full, so overflowing, so inspired. I thought, boy, Lord help me. I don't know if I could put up with that. No, you can't. In physical, you can't. That's why you're going to have to have a new body in the end. If you make eternal life your home, you will have to have a new body that can take those kind of stresses and durations, and inspirations. Amen. That kind of devotion needs to speak something to us. That frame of mind, that spirit of reverence, we use terms like being in awe of something. When was the last time you were truly in awe of something? Anything. Well, that's happened numerous times where I've just been awestruck. No words, couldn't describe it, it was just amazing. Grand Canyon, the rim of the Grand Canyon was one of them. The base uh, of the Twin Towers, while they were still standing anyway, was another tremendous experience. By the bay, next to the Pacific Ocean, standing on a mountain, looking out across 200 miles of expanse to Denali, just awesome. Many great awesome things that just to stand there, you just, uh, this is more than what I can describe. Inspiration like that. Now, this is Valentine's Day. Are you inspired like that about your loved ones? Yes. Is devotion like that for you, for anything? Lord has to help us here to understand this matter of devotion so that we can begin to maximize our opportunities. I've been married long enough to know that uh, my chances of getting help with anything from my mate are much better if I create good atmosphere. That's right. Come in, kicking doors and stomping mud and pitching things here and there and creating big messes that I don't clean up and uh, grumping around. They don't create any kind of atmosphere, but uh, what's going to bounce back and bite you? Much better to come in with a smile and some kind words and even lend a helping hand and begin to shine things up a little bit and get in there and pitch in and help with a few things 
and uh, pitch a few comments that are good, positive ones. Start to lift a little bit. I found out that uh, the mood and atmosphere and attitudes, a lot of things start to change and lift and strengthen. And cooperation increases. And my word, it doesn't take much to do that. It really doesn't take much to do that for one another. We can do that for one another, not just our mates. If you're like me, you're pretty crude and rude and unattractive when you got started in marriage. But uh, if you don't learn real fast, you probably don't stay married very long. If you don't learn. you got to learn. you got to learn this matter of devotion. What it means. What it requires. How to enjoy. How to give. How to give. How to live. How to enhance, how to build, develop. Lord, help us. The worship should be like this, like being in awe. There should be a reverential fear. There should be an attitude in us that just somehow is not able to grasp the one who we are seeking. I learned as a boy about this matter of uh, reverence. We'd go to church, and uh, I and my brother would start cutting up, and Dad was kind of a stickler for some of these kind of things. He'd shut us right down, straighten us up, and haul us out if necessary. That's right. I got hauled out a few times. My brother got hauled out a few times. Yeah. We got straightened out from the pulpit a few times. We learned this matter of reverential fear. That's a good way to start. But eventually it should develop into a devotional attitude to where we are just so inspired and in awe of the Lord. To where we begin to make our opportunities bring forth more than if we'd not had a good attitude about it. Worship should be a time where there is these attitudes that characterize worship. Serious, thoughtful, quiet, joyful, grateful, meditative, reflecting, peaceful, deep down inside the soul happy. You can get the most out of it that way, can you? You know, it's hard to uh, worship. If we, if Dave here, he signs up a bunch of circus artists to come in here, you know, and they're, they're twirling fans and juggling uh, stuff and so, somersaulting and cartwheeling and carrying on. A few clowns come by and say, what? They didn't know that's not a service worth going to. That's just not worth going to at all. Yeah. Where God is, there needs to be a devotion to Him. So, what is the description of our worship and of our prayer life? Is it the spirit of true devotion? True devotion creates atmosphere. So, Lord, help us to start to understand then what it was that drove these beasts. What drove these beasts to be crying out, holy, 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 without rest, praising, worshiping, glorifying, without rest, all the time, just continually given forth, just continually, continually. It must be that God is more awesome than what we ever thought. It must be that there's more to God than what we've ever dreamed. It must be that to be in the presence of God is far more powerful than what we've ever imagined it to be. Right. To where everything is set aside. Yeah. And you're in awe of Him. Amen.
I, I think there's uh, something powerful here for our understanding. I think there's something powerful here for our spiritual development. I think there's something powerful here for the sake of atmosphere to where God is able to go beyond what we normally think He should do and begin to get into the heart and into the mind of individuals like us and begin to move us in ways that we normally aren't moved. Help us, Lord. The spirit of true devotion creates atmosphere. It's in atmosphere that you have spiritual environment, and it's in spiritual environment that the graces of the Spirit can grow. Every year, Milton Pierce goes out and repairs his greenhouse. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't wait till the sun's shining bright and the days are long. He starts somewhere back in January or February or somewhere. He starts going to work and getting his greenhouse ready. And he repairs the, the frame and the, the sheeting and different things and starts to work the soil up and get this place ready. And he, away, he gets it going and gets it prepared for when the sun does shine longer and the air is warmer and he starts the plants in these, this place, this hot house, and starts it going. He creates atmosphere. He creates environment where young plants can grow. Listen, friends. If we want to raise a bunch of clowns, a bunch of religious clowns, all we have to do is have a shoddy, frivolous atmosphere all the time in our worship. We'll raise a bunch of clowns who won't know anything of the power of God. Who won't know anything of what we talked about in Sunday school. Faith and power, and saving, and sanctifying, and worship, and reverence, and the move of God that moves souls. They won't know anything about that. They'll know the words, they'll know the songs, they'll know the activities, they'll know what we do physically, taking offerings, of, and do what we do, but they won't know that inspiration that causes these beings to cry out, holy, 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 and without rest, they are so in awe of the God whose presence they are in. How are we going to do that? Lord, help us. We've got to understand spiritual environment where spiritual graces can grow. And it's up to us, the believer. It's up to us, the professor. It's up to us, the prayers and the testifiers and the preachers and the teachers and the singers. And it's up to us. To create environment, and that environment is created by our devotion, the quality of our devotion. Without the devoted attention, prayer is only lip service. Without devoted attention, the heart is not engaged. And here is the heart of the matter. We've got to engage the heart. We've got to engage the heart in all this matter of spiritual, in prayer, and testifying, in worship, in witnessing all these kind of things. We've got to engage the heart or we have not made the connection, folks. My wife and I have been married long enough to know when words are just words and there's nothing behind it. You ever had that kind of experience? Communicating with someone, what if it's just words and lip service and nothing deeper than that? Well, sometimes we get together and uh, we don't even say anything and my wife will say, what? <laughs> you know what that means, don't you? She feels something going on. So that the connection is deeper than just what's obvious to the eye or what's going on in the ear. There's a connection that's deeper, that's... Uh, Something's up, something's different, something's uh, off here. What? You say, what do you mean what? You know what. <laughs> oh, I had such and such happen. I had such and such not go right. I just got word from someone. Yeah, there is something, isn't there? Heart is engaged. Amen. 
You know, this matter of faith we were talking about, I had a good discussion in Sunday school about faith. When the heart is engaged in your worship, when the heart is engaged in your religion, your spiritual life and your heart is engaged, God will engage you at the heart level. And there's some things you don't need discussion and definition for because God, the Holy Spirit, is defining it for you at a heart level. And you may not be able to put it into words, but you'll know to put it into action. Amen. Growing up, I knew when discipline was administered, and sometimes I didn't need spanked to know that discipline had been administered. All Dad did was look at me. No words were exchanged. No paddling was necessary. All he did was look at me. But I was already in such awe to where that's all he needed to do. You know, God, many times, has to take an individual and dangle them over the fire, wave them over the flames before they finally say, to them, Lord, what do you want me to do? Oh, Lord, what do you want me to be? Are you waiting for that kind of experience where the Lord just hang you out over the fire and let you cook a little bit? Listen, folks, there's a better way. There's a better way. We can get ourselves by the nap of the neck and pull ourselves into a atmosphere, a spirit of devotion, and open up and engage the heart and let the Lord begin to talk and minister, and witness, and guide, and check, and balance, and fill, and strengthen, and encourage. Let God engage the heart. And you're going to have to stop the circus, folks, in order for that to happen. You're going to have to stop the merry ground and get off and let the Lord talk. Ever been thrown off a merry ground? No. No? You're in for a big experience. <laughs> I've been thrown off a few times. When I was younger, we'd get those things going so fast. Had a couple people on the outside just to open those things and the rest of us be hanging on. I lost grip a couple times. <laughs> Flying and hit the dirt. Much better to just slow the thing down and then get off. Amen. Devotion, devotion is in our power to do. That's what we do to get ourselves into a spirit of frame of mind, attitude, quiet of the spirit, and then let the Lord talk. How often have you heard this about the Lord, about His dealing? The still, small voice. You ever heard that expression? Sure you have. If you've been around church for any length of time, you've heard that. The still, small voice. The, you're going to have to stop the marriage now, get off, and get yourself in a devoted sense of mind. How many Valentine's Days have you told your mate or your loved ones, I love you, and they knew it didn't come from the heart, it was just something you said on Valentine's Day. Or how many mornings or days I love you didn't come from the heart. It was just something you say. Heart not engaged. Just something you say. Folks, if we're going to get anything spiritually, we're going to have to engage the heart. And it's going to have to take some devotion in order for that to happen. So stop the circus. Stop the merry-go-round. Get off. And start giving God the kind of quality, time, and atmosphere, and ear that He can engage your heart with what He's trying to get across. Help us, Lord. Without the devoted attention, prayer is only lip service. Without heart engagement, we must get deeper than just the religious performance. We've been talking about this in a variety of ways over the span of some months. We've got to get past the religious performance. We're doing the religious performance good. You look good and smell good and you smile good and on and on and on. But folks, is your heart engaged yes. in Him? 
to where he can, in the still small voice, say, I love you. This is the way. Walk in it. No, you can't be that. No, I don't want you to have that. Yes, keep plugging on. Yes, this is the way. Walk in it. Yes, I'm pleased with you. Or no, stand still and learn. Just hold steady and learn important things in the journey you're in right now. The still small voice. Help us, Lord. We've got to lay hold on this fervency of devotion to bring everything religious alive. This fervency of devotion is what's going to help everything religious come alive and have meaning. I enjoyed our song service this morning. It was just good and strong and meaningful. Amen. And I hope it's that way for you. That you've devoted yourself to this short bit of time in order to worship, truly worship, give praise, and give thanks, and shout out your praise and your thanks, and share one with another, and smile at one another, tell one another you appreciate them, you love them, you care about them, and begin to pull this thing together, a sense of devotion. Amen. you got to do that for one another. Husbands and wives. Brothers and sisters. Moms and dads. Grandpas and grandmoms and grandchildren. Granddaughters and grandsons. Friends and loved ones. You're going to have to open up here. And let your devotion be known understood, recognized. Engage the heart. Engage the heart. Engage the heart. These beings were totally engaged. They didn't even rest. They just wanted to, you know, I confess, in this human realm, that my wife just kind of stood there and looked at me and said, I love you for five days. I wouldn't look at it as devotion. <laughs> I'd think, oh, somebody help me. We just went to the hospital. There's something wrong. She stood there looking at me and said, I love you for five days, ten days. I said, oh, she's ill, she's sick. <laughs> see, you don't see that the same way, do you? <laughs> Why? Heart's not engaged. If the heart was engaged, all she has to do is say, I love you once. With heart engaged, it will register. Amen. How much prayer goes unregistered? How much testimony goes unregistered? Mouth moving, heart not engaged. Help us, Lord. Help us to get to the place to where everything that's religious can come alive. One of these days, we want to do communion. One of these days. We'll talk about it. One of these times, I think it will be good for us to have communion service. Amen. In order for communion to mean anything, you have to understand what it's for, what it represents, and you have to pull yourself together and engage the heart. We're not going to just line you up here, the big old long line here. Like, okay, Dave, you start on that end with the wine. I'll start over here with the wafers. And you just open up and we'll come down. And I just pop them in. <laughs> here we go. Oh, bless you. Just pop them in all the way down there. Okay, come on, Dave. Pour the wine down your throats. All right, you sit down now. You've been blessed. No, you haven't been blessed. You've been made fun of. Help us, Lord. Get a sense of devotion in the things that we do for worship, for prayer, for praise. Whether it's songs or testimonies or preaching, or teaching, or fellowshipping in the faith. Devoted. What does that mean? What does it mean? What does devotion mean? Heart engaged. Heart engaged. Amen. Well, Lord help us. These beings were devoted. They were in it full strength. They were in it heart engaged. Why? For this reason. 
God was the center of attention. The Lord was the center of attention. Simple as that. The Lord was the center of attention. Amen. Valentine's Day is more special when you become the center of attention for one another. Even if it's just 10 seconds. 10 seconds of being the center of attention is better than 150 days with none at all. Get that? The center of attention. And when the Lord is the center of attention, attitudes change. We never got to be around Jesus when he was here on earth. What would you do? How would you react? How would you respond? What would you do? Well, if we knew now what, uh, if we knew then what we know now, a lot of us would be there, boy, hands out and asking for any number of different things. Oh, Lord. Oh, but it's not our privilege to be there. But it is our privilege. It is our privilege to have Christ's Spirit yes. with us. So we don't have to be there when that happens. We can be here in a sense of devotedness with God, center of attention, and we'll get what it is we need. Heart engaged, heart open, and the Lord can talk to us and help us at that depth of our being that we need. To face the day, to get through what it is we're in, to have the wisdom, the guidance, the direction we need for this hour, the comfort, the stability, to hold steady in a difficult time, and just keep pressing on. Praise the Lord. to get you through it. He really will. Here, the center of attention is God. The heavenly beings are in awe. What they see and know fires them up. What they see and know fires them up. <laughs> I've tried to describe to my wife uh, some of the things that I've seen or were doing or at on the phone a few times. So, oh, you won't believe this. And she's done that to me a few times too. Gone somewhere on a plane and then tried to describe to me the view. <laughs> what they see and know fires them up. And that's where we got to be here, folks. We got to try to see God. And you're not going to make that happen until you make Him a center of attention. Until one day, how will. How will anyone know when you see God? Don't worry. We'll all know because you're going to be making noise night and day. Why? Because you're so odd. Not O-D-D. A-W-E-D. Well, as I read this, I kind of thought, you know, where God is, where heaven is, where they are, no dead beats there. No dead beats there. God's the center of attention, no questioning. God's the center of attention, and everyone there is alive. Everything there, everyone there is alive. When God is the center of attention. May our devotion step up that God can give us the help spiritually that we really, truly need. Amen. Valentine's Day is a good day to talk about devotion, isn't it? You say, well, you know, I kind of been slack about uh, a good sense of devotedness. Okay, now that you know, you can get to work on it, can't you? Sure. That's not bad. It's good to see where you're at. It's, oh, man, I was so far behind, I thought I was the leader. <laughs> it's not a matter of me. I'm not enjoying it. I gotta catch up. I got catching up to do. And when it comes to devotion, you might have catching up to do. Get to work. 
Get busy. It is something you can do. The Lord bless you. Happy Valentine's Day. And may the love of God just fire you up today and every day. Hey, let's bow and we'll have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the word that shows us where we are and where we aren't, where we need to be and what we can do. That shows us the grandeur that is God. Lord, we fall so short in understanding, but nevertheless, we keep reaching, we keep seeking. We keep praying, we keep praising. We're going to keep on pressing on, Lord, by your grace and mercy. And we thank you for each one that is here today. Bless our time together. Bless us. Continually with your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.